and welcome to today's devotion. We are still in Paul's church, uh, letter rather to the church in Rome. We're looking at chapter 8. We've been working our way through this, this letter. Very powerful, probably one of the most in-depth, intellectual, uh, load-bearing letters that is in Scripture. It is, uh, it is rich, it is deep, it is profound, and no matter how many times I read this letter, it st- speaks to me in different ways, in different levels. Um, uh, God, in, in choosing Paul to, to write these letters and speaking through him, uh, picked one of, if not the most intellectual person, um, really in his generation. So we're looking at chapter 8. We're going to f- start rather uh, with verse 28. And before we do that, let's pray together. Lord, thank you for your word and for your faithfulness in revealing the truth of your word as we go into it day after day and seek your, your wisdom. Now as we go into, once again, this letter that was written to the first believers in Rome, May it speak to us of the deep, profound revelation that you give to us through your spirit. And this we pray in the name of your son, who is with us now, Jesus the Messiah. Amen. Paul writes in verse 28 of chapter 8, we know, another translation will say, for we know that all things work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. For those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son, so that he would be the firstborn among many brothers and sisters. And those he predestined, he also called, and those he called, he also justified, and those he justified, he also glorified." Last time we looked at this letter, we talked about the experience of faith, and the experience of faith is what Paul is referring to in verse 28. For we know that in through all things, God works together for the good of those who love God. And that process, uh, that, that, that realization gives us a sense of peace, that no matter what we face, We don't have to be afraid to face it. We don't have to be afraid of going through it and of dealing with it because we know that God has called us to a greater purpose in belonging to him. And as such, we realize that God had already put this in place as a plan for us to go through. We may not have planned it. In fact, many times, well, honestly, no one ever plans for bad things to happen, trials or tribulations or things that we don't want to deal with, whether they're health issues, whether they are circumstantial issues that deal with our finances or uh, our well-being. We don't plan for bad things to happen, but God will allow those and as such has already planned a way for us not only to go through these things, but to go through them with him and to actually become better people. Better meaning people of character, people whose character is such that we may be pushed down or knocked down, but we don't stay down if you want to use that. We're being transformed into his likeness. And so that gives us a sense of peace. And in verse 28, Paul writes this, we know this. This is knowledge that comes over time and through many different experiences because the knowledge of this Uh, it, It goes deep. Otherwise, we react to things on a continuous basis. And life is nothing more than a constant reacting to things and and reacting to the next thing that comes down and and hopefully we can get through it so that we can get to a state where we can no longer have to deal with bad things happening in our lives and then we react to the next bad thing that happens to our lives. And life then becomes a constant reacting to the various uh, scenarios and situations that we have to face. We don't live that way as Christians. Now, we may experience that, but over time with God, 
we become less and less reactive and more and more responsive. We respond in faith to the things that come our way in a way that we lean into God. Our first reaction or response is not to be overcome by our emotions, but to automatically, habitually, and routinely lean into God and work work with God, ask God, listen to God. What is it that you're trying to teach us? Where are we going? What do you want me to learn, et cetera? And that positioning, if you will, that psychological, spiritual, emotional, mental positioning is putting on the mind of Christ. So in view of that, he writes in verse 29, for those he foreknew, he also predestined to be conformed to the image of his son. And that's what's taking place. We are being transformed to his image. His image is the image of God. Now this goes back, Paul understands, Paul being very well aware of his Jewish history and his identity and and being very um, aware of and studied thoroughly studied through his Jewish scriptures, realizes that the first human beings were made in the image of God. That image no longer was the reality starting from Genesis 3, but now we are being transformed to the image of Jesus, who, like Adam, is made, created, begotten rather, I should say, not not created, begotten in God's image. And as such, the first image bearer was Adam, the son of God. Jesus, the second image bearer, son of God, is the one now that we get to become like as we learn from him, as we place our trust in him, as we spend time with him, as we get to realize who he truly is in God. And so... As we become transformed into his image, we also, like him, become recreated in God's image. And this is why he can write so that he, Jesus, would be the firstborn among many brothers. Brothers and sisters is uh, the translation I have. That Jesus will be one of many. And then in verse 30, and those he predestined, meaning us, He also called this calling that we have, this faith that we have, if you will, is evidence of our calling. This calling does not originate with us. It it originates with God. Sometimes people misunderstand this this calling with regards to having faith. Um, Faith is a gift, and some people have it, but they view it as maybe not having a gift of faith because they also have doubts. There's not anybody that doesn't have doubts. Doubts are part of our human nature, and so we work through those. It's not like you're either all of faith or you don't believe in God at all. It's a process, and no one is at the same place. We are all in different places with our faith. Some of us have traveled many many years and have gone through many different experiences. And so through that, our faith has grown. Others have not. They're younger in the faith, but we're all going in the same direction because the calling is the same for all of us. And those he predestined, he also called. Those he called, he also justified, meaning we are right before before and in relationship with him. There's nothing then that we have to do. It's not performance-based if you will, never has been performance-based. That doesn't mean it's not active. Our relationship with God is not passive. It is active, but it's not performance-based. And this is what he means by he also justified, meaning God justifies us. And those he justified, he also glorified, meaning that the good, his very goodness, he, is, he has put within us. That's what the glory of God is. God's manifest goodness, if you will. And that goodness he has put in us, it's working through us. 
And that then brings us to verse 31, which we will pick up next time. So thank you for tuning in today. I look forward to getting into verse 31 next time we come together. And until then, may the peace of God be with you always. And I will see you next time.